nature's own nuclear reactors existed and today we can still see what is left of the two billion year old nuclear fusion reactors in Oklo, Gabon, Western Africa. They occurred naturally due to the high enrichment of the natural uranium with the isotope 235, which at the time was 3%, while today is only at 0.72% due to natural decay and also due to the proper condition when the ore was in contact with water, which acted as neutral moderator. These reactors operated for a very long time and produced nuclear waste, most of which decayed away in the time which has passed since then. Today, the sites are used as benchmark for migration of radium nuclides in nature. This is needed in order to know how high active, long-lived radioactive waste behaves in a final repository if the radium nuclides are not contained in a special containers. However, Man-made fission reactors have led to the nuclear reactors as we know today, under the name of Generation 1, 2 and 3, and the development is ongoing on Generation 3 and 4 reactors, where different designs are considered. The advancements consist of building better, more efficient and also safer machines with each new model. There are many designs which are in use today, like gas cool reactors, pressure water reactors, boiling water reactors, pressured heavy water reactors, advanced gas-cooled reactors, and high-power channel-type reactors, RMBK. They are fueled with different types of nuclear fuel, like natural or enriched uranium oxide, or mixed oxides of uranium and plutonium, and also having different coolants like water, heavy water, liquid metals, or gases. For advanced Generation 4 reactors, the design, fuel, and coolants can vary a lot. The fuels can be made of metallic uranium, uranium fluoride in a salt, or uranium oxide and nitrites. The coolants can be supercritical water, helium, lead or lead bismuth eutectic, liquid sodium and fluoride salts. The primary goal for the safety of a system is to identify the main issues which can lead to release of radionuclides. In this case, it is the confinement, which is the part which is dedicated to the safety function of preventing the escape of radioactive material. The containment refers to the means for achieving that safety function. The primary hazard is that fission products are highly radioactive. The aggravating factor which is enhancing the primary hazard is that nuclear fuel can never be completely shut down. A lot of the case heat is still generated. The main objective of an operator is always to prevent the release of radioactivity in the environment. In order to prevent the release of radioactivity, there are multiple independent physical barriers, like the fuel pin, the reactor vessel, and the containment. There are also safety systems which prevent overheating of the core when normal coolant is lost. The physical barriers creating for containing radioactive material during the normal operation of a nuclear power plants are the fuel matrix itself, which in many cases are oxides which are usually chemically inert, pressed in pellets with a controlled porosity. The cladding, which is made from a material which has to appear more or less transparent to the neutrons which are needed to start and maintain the nuclear reaction, in the fuel, does not interfere with the process. At the same time, it has to be sufficiently resistant to radiation and mechanical damage, thus protecting the fuel. The coolant has to be a medium which can easily transport heat, assuring good cooling of the nuclear fuel. Also, in the case of any radioactive release, it acts as a barrier by retaining at least for some time the released radionuclides. The reactor vessel and pressure boundaries and any welds are the main parts which can eventually fail. The containment building, which includes all the adjacent buildings, including the basement. In the case of the release of fusion products, which have escaped from the fuel, cladding and coolant, the last barriers are the welds which will secure the pipes in the reactor system and the reactor building, including the basement. The reactor building is a very strong structure, able to withstand earthquakes and other events such as a plane crash. The basement is reinforced and contains a series of redundant systems which are capable of catching and confining the eventual core melt, thus even the safety is maintained and the right materials are very important for this purpose. Safety has to be guaranteed not only during the reactor operation, but also during the management of spent nuclear fuel. Indeed, any radioactive waste like nuclear fuel, containment effluents or activated materials must be handled, stored and secured so that no release to the environment occurs. Safety has to be assured during waste management. 
Confinement of radionuclides consists of a series of physical barriers which have to last at least 100,000 years, thus the final repository has to be carefully designed and executed. Even more, there are physical barriers in place for the next step, where the nuclear fuel becomes nuclear waste and safety disposal is needed. Usually the spent nuclear fuel is lifted and stored either on site for a short time in dedicated water field storage pools or transported to an interim storage facility by train or water, waiting for the final disposal, if it already exists. Worldwide, only Finland has a final repository close to commissioning, while Sweden is following closely. In the Swedish concept, the fuel will be first encased in an iron canister, which will be placed within a copper canister and further placed in a borehole deep underground, approximately 500 meters, in the final repository, where the bentonite clay rings will be placed around the copper canisters. The repository tunnels will be covered with gravel and sand, and then sealed with cement, where they will remain forever, unless reprocessing becomes possible in the future. For this reason, some repositories are specifically designed to be able to retrieve the waste with special built machines. Containment, confinement, and waste management are essential for preventing the radionuclides and any other effluents from spreading into the biosphere. The right chemical combination of the fuel, cladding, coolant, and the surrounding materials is the base of the safe operation of a nuclear reactor and the paramount for preventing any escape of fission products. The right cladding material can diminish eventual release, especially if the cladding material is not chemically reactive and doesn't act as a catalyst to form gases such as hydrogen. If gases form, it can accelerate and increase the eventual release of radioactivity. The right welding and the integrity of secondary loop can contain and delay or even stop eventual release of radionuclides from the primary circuit. The integrity of the buildings and the storage rooms are the last and the most important barrier between the release and the environment. Thus, the quality and safety features of these last barriers are very important. The role of radiochemists is firstly to foresee any potential release scenario from the beginning of the nuclear fuel design. Also, to anticipate and prevent any chemical interaction with the surrounding materials so no secondary release or acceleration of the release occurs. The waste forms or matrices have to be anticipated and mitigation measures have to be taken, even for the long-term repository.